Now, are you an Inktober noob? <laughs> Have you never ever done Inktober before and you don't know where to start? And you're like, oh, Inktober, I wanna do it. But it's just like, oh, where do we begin? Well, you're not alone in this and this video is for you. So you landed in the right spot. <laughs> This actually is my first year ever doing Inktober. So first off, I feel you. We're going to cover what Inktober is, talk about the logistics and everything, and just how to get it done, how to come up with ideas. And throughout all this, you'll get to see how I draw two Inktober prompts. First off, what even is Inktober? The word Inktober itself is actually a combination of the words ink in October. Get it? October, Inktober. So basically what Inktober is, is that if for every single day of the month, you draw an ink drawing based on a prompt list that the website inktober.com comes out with. It's a worldwide art challenge made to create good habits of consistency and inspire creativity over the course of this challenge. There are 31 prompts that come out, one for every single day of October, and usually they come out uh, on September 1st, so a month early, so that you have time to draw all of these in advance if you feel like it. And the thing about Inktober is that the cool part, which is fun, is during the month of October, every day, you post your artwork online to share it with others under the hashtag Inktober. Now, do you have to post your art online? No, it doesn't really matter. It's up to you totally. But it's a fun aspect of this challenge and it kind of creates community within the art community because under these hashtags you can see what other people did for these prompts and it, it's really it's really cool to see what others what other minds created with just the same exact word so these words that come out are like themes you can just generalize generally put them in there like for example the drawing i am drawing right now is for the third inktober prompt of 2023 which is path and for this drawing i'm i'm just drawing a person uh, at a path a fork in the path so the word is included in the general idea of my drawing in this case if it's if it could be let's say sparkle it could be just a person someone wearing a crown you know so it's just it's just the the goal of these prompts is to inspire something within you and get you drawing you know now is inktober a contest is it to see the who's the best artist who did the best prompt no it isn't it is not at all it's just a way a fun way to improve your art over the course of this challenge and just to be creative and share your artwork with other people now let me just fill you in on what my process is for this drawing right now. So truthfully I found a reference photo on Pinterest and all I did was really look up person at on at path or something and certain things popped up and I thought that this guy that's lying down sort of like so it looks so pathetic. <laughs> I don't know. It was like it, it stirred some emotions within me and so I chose it as as my person the base for my person but the path i used a different reference photo just to see how it receded into the distance because i wanted a forked path so i use pinterest for inspiration and stuff and if you want you can check out my pinterest i'll leave a link in the description below it's really disorganized i'm just warning you but there are things there that inspire me and you can get inspired from there too so what i'm doing is you saw me before draw in a uh, a sketch with pencil and uh, i thought that's fitting because you kind of want to get an, a general idea of where everything is supposed to be and before you start inking right so you shouldn't be too strict on yourself with this this challenge is not it's originally made to use ink and pen and whatever but you don't have to you can use watercolors you can use other mediums you can use like a mix of multiple it's really really up to you and that's what i really love about this challenge is that you're, you're like here are the prompts here's the idea do whatever you want with it and have fun 
I'll be honest, I actually started drawing with pen less than like around a month ago, not too long. And this is my first painting pencil drawing, I mean pen drawing, because before I just did portraits. I have a video on that, so you can look back on my channel on how I drew portraits every day for a certain amount of time and with pen with only pen and the progress there is really cool so if you're interested in that go check it out the pen i'm using here is this zebra retractable ballpoint retractable ballpoint like ballpoint pen so f 301 i'm pretty sure this is it because i look it looks similar to it is zebra i know it's zebra 100 percent but my pen has been just uh it's a pretty old pen so it all the titles on it washed off so i'm pretty sure that's the one it is though so i really like this pen because it's a thinner ballpoint and it's it's easier to draw with and you can get finer details there too but if you have just grab a normal pen okay if you don't have this or it's really don't overcomplicate it seriously i really mean it don't overcomplicate it grab a pen and just start that is the first thing you should do just just start also, do you need to do the prompts in order? No, <laughs> make your own rules, remember? So read through the Inktober prompts, see if any word gives you an idea for something to draw. And if it does, do it immediately, like just do it, do it. You can do them out of order. That is what I did. Actually for this, for this year's challenge, I didn't do all the prompts. I just did the ones that I, f that inspired me and i drew a drawing out of them so it's really make your own rules and i'm gonna say this a lot of times probably make your own rules <laughs> just relax it's not as it's not as crazy or as such a big deal as you probably think it is now you can see how i'm drawing in the flora and fauna on this piece and i'm just i'm freehanding this honestly when you freehand and stuff look at shapes if you're using a reference photo look at general shapes and shadows are very important go in for with the darkest areas first and it really gives you context as to where everything is let's talk paper let's talk size so for this challenge that's this whole october challenge what i did was as you saw in the beginning of the video i separated my sketchbook paper into four and it, it was like it was perfect not too big not too small on the smaller side but it's perfect it's like bite size i don't know what size my sketchbook is so i can't really tell you exactly what size this all is and my sketchbook's on the bigger side and i don't feel like measuring it right now because i'm not going to measure it i'm too lazy for that right now but oh wait oh wait i think oh it says on the sketchbook okay so it's nine inches by 12 inches this is the size of my sketchbook so i separated that into four the page and you can just measure how much you can like do the math and figure out how big everything else is i wanted to share the meaning of this piece with you and when i first read the prompt path on the october list the first thing I thought of immediately was Robert Frost's poem, The Road Not Taken. I don't know if you've heard it before, but if you have, it, I mean, if you haven't, then here it is for you. I'll read it. Two roads diverged in a yellow wood, and sorry, I could not travel both. That was really bad. I'm so bad at writing poems. Okay. Two roads diverged in a yellow wood, and sorry, I could not travel both. And be one traveler, long I stood, and looked down one as far as I could, to where it bent in the undergrowth. Then took the other just as fair, and having perhaps the better claim, because it was grassy and wanted wear, though as for that, the passing there, had wore them really about the same. And both that morning equally lay, in leaves no step had trodden black. Oh, I kept the first for another day, yet knowing how way leads on to way, I doubted if I should ever come back. I shall be telling this with a sigh somewhere ages and ages hence. Two roads diverged in a wood, and I, I took the one less traveled by, and that has made all the difference. When you're faced with two important life-changing choices, and you can't decide what to do, it, it gives a sort of uncertainty inside of you, and maybe you start to feel disappointed at yourself, frustrated that you can't figure it out, and this is the feeling that... I was actually feeling in the moment when I was drawing this piece 
and it, I think it really captured that uncertainty and sadness, really. The drawing that I'm drawing right now is for the prompt rise, which is the 13th prompt of the Inktober list this year. And like I said, we're going out of order. And with this drawing, it's really when you do a challenge consistently over the course of several days or months or any period of time, really, it gives you this space for space to grow because you're bound to grow during one of these challenges and it's so interesting to see especially in an art sense it could be your progress you got better at drawing or you created this story sometimes even without trying and this is the case with this second prompt this was actually the second drawing i've ever drawn for inktober now the idea for this prompt was to draw someone hanging off the stair uh, the stairs and just urging themselves to rise from that very dangling terrifying position and i'll get into the whole deep voodoo meaning of it all in a bit but the to draw this piece i went on pinterest and i was like how am I how am I supposed to find a reference photo for this? Because I wanted the model to be male and I needed a specific pose, you know? Like you you won't every you won't just find reference photos of people hanging off stairs every day, you know? So I was like, okay. So I looked up rock climber and uh, there were a ton of things and with Pinterest it's like hit or miss. <laughs> so you have to scroll a bit to find what you need, but I did and I'm really happy with it. So instead of the rocks, this guy was hanging off a cliff. So instead of the cliff, I put the stairs there and I really, really struggled with drawing stairs. You know, there's this one moment in your drawing art process where you have this sort of hiccup and you're like, you can't just, you can't figure it out. And it's so frustrating and, and, and you just, you're considering maybe even just giving up but these stairs were really really difficult and especially when you don't know how exactly you want your drawing to go like you have an idea but the whole execution part wasn't really thought out as much so that was the case with me and this drawing but we're going in first with pencil and i found that that worked for the previous drawing so why fix what's broken right let's just go in with pencil first now, when you're drawing something that is very detailed and has a lot of shapes that you have to get right for it to look good, which is with me in this case with the rock climber, I found that drawing, when in doubt, just draw in the darkest areas. Identify where the shadows are and just draw in the shadows. Don't think about the highlights. Don't think about it too much. Just locate where the shadows are and just draw them in, draw in the shadow shapes. Every single shadow has its own shape and just draw it in. And slowly you'll start, once you build up those shadows, you'll you'll start to see just the three, it's, it's just gonna come to life. It's, it's gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna really work out for you. So that is my biggest tip and I still use it all the time and it's so helpful for me. You might wonder, how how is it, how are you not afraid? How do you get used to drawing with pen and the final, the finalness of drawing with pen? Because you can't just get rid of it once you make a mark. When you rely on e an eraser, you find that you are constantly erasing what you're drawing and the eraser ends up, instead of being helpful, it slowly starts to hinder you and slow down your drawing process one tip i can give you you have to change your own mind when you draw and look at the drawing differently you're not trying to make a masterpiece here okay you're learning you have to accept that you're learning and it doesn't really matter at what level you are in your art you're always going to be learning something and i also mean this in a you know positive way you're positively a student okay you're not going to beat yourself up saying oh i'm so bad i'm not i'm not a pro right no do not do that be calm about it and be like you know we are learning what you want though is just to draw just to draw with pen you just want to figure things out and you're just going to have fun. Don't be a perfectionist. Don't be perfect because it's in the, you're not perfect. You're human. You cannot be perfect. 
And when you put yourself to such a high standard of perfection, you're just you're just going to eventually you're going to crumble because it's just impossible to keep up with such a high standard of not every single art piece can be a masterpiece. It's just not possible. You have to give yourself space to learn and tell yourself that I am learning right now so that I can get better. And you know there's this I read in the book The Magic Lamp by ugh I forgot who it was. <laughs> I forgot the author. I'll put it on the screen. But one of the quotes that really stood out to me in there is it's a really amazing book. I think you should definitely uh take a look into it if you're having, you know, trouble being consistent like getting your goals done and and really deciding what you want to do in life and finding direction. And so I thought that book was really helpful, but one of the really the quotes that really stood out to me was that ordinary effort over time can yield extraordinary results. Meaning even if you don't try hard, if you do something enough, then you'll just automatically get better. It's just how your brain works. If you scroll back to the the beginning of my channel, you you could see the big difference from back then to today. And the reason why such a shift and such a quick progress happened over the course of one year, I think, this is what I think, is that it's because I stayed consistent over the course of one year. And it really it really goes to show that if you do something enough times, you'll just get better at it. You might ask, but how do you how do you get yourself to do something enough times? You can't help but feel discouraged sometimes. And that is also fine. You can feel discouraged. Just give yourself space to come back. Don't judge yourself too harshly because every single big artist out there we all started somewhere. We all started somewhere. And if you don't start somewhere, then how can you expect to get anywhere either? Now, as for the meaning of this drawing, which I wanted to share with you, is I wrote this little thing about it on Instagram. When you slip and are barely hanging on, you have a choice just to let go or hoist yourself up again and rise. It's easier to let yourself fall but you can't help but hear the voice chanting in your ear urging you to rise.